So I got a new software engineering job in 2025. That's impossible. In this video, I wanna share exactly how I got my new job from getting the interviews to passing the interviews to hopefully help anybody else who is on this journey. And I don't say journey lightly. This was quite the experience. For reference, the last time I interviewed was in 2020. That's when I got my job at Amazon. And so this was the first time I did recruiting in almost five years. The thought of leaving my job at Amazon was really scary because I had no idea if I could actually get another job again. But having gone through it, I do think it was really difficult, but it's not impossible. And I'm here to share everything that I learned to hopefully help anybody else out. That kind of leads me into who exactly this video is for. If you are someone looking for a new grad job, or if you're looking for an internship, this is not that, okay? I don't know what it's like to get those jobs in 2025. I have four and a half years of experience. This is really more aimed at other mid-level engineers who are looking for jobs with a little bit more experience under their belt. For those of you who don't even care about the actual tip, that I have to share. The TLDR of my job search is that I ended up getting interviews at seven different companies. I got on sites with four of them, and then I got one offer and I accepted that offer. So I had a hunch that it might be hard to get interviews because of all the layoffs that have happened. And you think that working four and a half years at Amazon, all these companies would be lining up to interview you. And yeah, that was not the case at all whatsoever. It was extremely difficult for me to get interviews. So the first thing I did was I got as many referrals as I could at any company that I was interested in, which was pretty much all of them. These are companies like Google, Microsoft, JP Morgan, MongoDB, pretty much any close person I had working at any of these companies, I asked for a referral. So I had quite a few referrals at all these companies. And the the only company that gave me an interview through a referral was Meta. And so at this point, since the referrals weren't working out, I sent a bunch of cold applications to probably about a hundred different companies and I didn't hear back from a single one of them as well. Yeah, basically out of all the referrals and all the applications that I sent out, I only got one interview, which you think would be a little bit different because I had four and a half years of experience, but it really didn't change anything. Because those two avenues weren't working, I had to get pretty creative about how I wanted to get a new job. So I started cold emailing and that's not like a revolutionary tip by any means, but it was the one that made the biggest impact to my job search. So because my resume was pretty much targeted towards Android mobile development, it was what I did for the last four years. What I did was I looked on LinkedIn for any recruiter at any company, and I would look for like Android or mobile development keywords, or if they'd posted anything recently. And I would find all these recruiters at all these companies. And so I'd use their profile and I'd try to find their email. And if I found their email, then I would send them a cold email with my resume and like pitching myself a little bit towards them. And I only got about like a 10% response rate. And a lot of them, they were like, yeah, this recruiting is actually not my department because I would actually, you know, get some wrong or some of them had switched departments and stuff. But six of the 10 responses that I got back actually converted into interviews. Yeah, that actually ended up being the biggest thing that helped me get interviews. And this was for pretty big places too, like Netflix, DoorDash, TikTok, Reddit. Like I would be happy to work for any of these companies. Cold emailing ended up being a huge thing. Another thing I learned was that the domain that you have your experience in really does matter. When I was getting a new grad job, you know, they were just kind of looking for generic skills and they were just looking for somebody who can solve like these leak code problems and stuff. But the hiring as a mid-level slash senior role, they really want somebody who knows the domain. So out of the responses that I got, I think there's a reason that the only ones who responded to me were mainly in Android mobile development. And it's because the other ones, I, I think I sent a couple emails out who were like, close, like front end and stuff, those never got back to me. And I think it's just because like, I wasn't really matching that criteria. So I think experience like is huge. What you do today, day to day, really matters what you're gonna do in the future, or at least like it's gonna help get more jobs like that. And so if you're not doing something right now that you don't really like, the best thing to do is to transfer internally and try different tech or try different roles because what you end up putting on your resume is what you're gonna be the most hireable for. So that was a really big learning moment for me. Like if you don't wanna keep doing mobile development, then you should transition out of that role because if your resume only has mobile development stuff on it, then that's all people are gonna to wanna to hire you for. And this also applied to positions that I cold applied just online. If they're looking for a web tech, like if they're looking for experience in Scholar or Go, like instant rejection. If they're looking for backend developer in C++, like instant rejection. It really does matter what your resume has and you can't really fake it either because the interviews are definitely gonna know if you have experience with the tech or not. So yeah, that was really important for me to learn. All right, so the next part about actually passing the interviews. The first thing I learned about passing interviews after doing a ton of research online is that you can actually fail the recruiter screen. 
a lot of times like to kick off the entire interview process the recruiter would actually screen me just to make sure like you know they see me on zoom i'm like a real person and like i actually know what i'm talking about on my resume and stuff i think it's important to know that you can actually fail these it's not hard to pass them but you can fail them and they really want you just to name a bunch of keywords and like a bunch of the words related to the role and i think i had a recruiter screen with every company. So it's a pretty standard part of the process. The interviews themselves, pretty much all of the phone screens were lead code based questions with the interviewer, which is like pretty normal. I think everybody kind of knows about these by now. And so I was doing a lot of practice before even I started interviewing because I know how long it is to ramp up that part of my brain again. And so I did the Need Code 150. I think Need Code 150, it is very helpful. Pretty much everybody knows about it now. One underrated tip about it is I would often forget some of the stuff in the Need Code 150 as I was doing more and more problems. And so some some days I would go back and repeat problems and it was like a perfectly good exercise. Repeating old problems that you've done before is an under appreciated way of practicing. Yeah, so what I did was I did the Need Code 150 and then eventually I started to do the daily lead code problem just to practice seeing like a fresh problem every single day. And then also I would do the Need Code problems on lead code. That was like how I repeated the problem. Another thing that I learned was like you have to actually use the language that they're interviewing you for, which I feel like makes sense. But so many interview experiences I've seen online, they were like, yeah, like you can just use whatever you want. Like you can use Python and stuff, but that was not the experience that I had because I was using Need Code 150 and looking at the solutions all the time. Everything was in Python. So I was doing a lot of it in Python, but I soon came to realize like they wanted me to do it in Kotlin or Java, the main programming languages in native Android development apps. Yeah, that's like mainly how I practiced the algorithmic coding style. The one thing that kind of caught me off guard was they do also test you for domain knowledge, which shouldn't technically be a difficult thing, but sometimes you can get these questions out of left field and it kind of throws you off. They're asking me like, what are these things? And they just, you know, they just want like a single sentence to explain things like app architecture. And they're not reeling me. These are things you should know, but I also have to dedicate some time on the side to studying the concepts because sometimes they'll just like ask you a question and you don't want to be totally unprepared for it, you know? And so most of the phone screens I did were really just leak code problems or domain trivia. When it came to on-site rounds, this is where things changed a lot. I don't think I did a single system design problem when I was interviewing for new grads in 2020. I think I did one for like Robin Hood, but yeah, pretty much system design was in every single loop of the on-sites that I had. Man, system design is such a mixed bag. I kind of hate it. The thing is you just have to know so much stuff and you kind of have to be prepared for whatever they ask you. For me, I mainly used Hello Interview to study and I have a feeling that the only system design interview that's well documented and well understood is the meta system design interview because the system design interview I had at meta was very similar to like how they structure their videos and how they structure their explanations and stuff. At other companies, the system design rounds were much more different. Yeah, hello interview is what I used to mainly study and it really exposed me to a bunch of the concepts, but I will say that not every interview looked exactly like the hello interview style. Oh yeah, and I forgot about behavioral interviews too. Behavior interviews are really important in on-site loops as well. I was spending a lot of time crafting and perfecting a lot of the stories that I had. And I was even watching videos of other people doing behavioral interviews on YouTube. There was one that came up on Hello Interview while I was interviewing on their YouTube channel. I was seeing a lot of the behind the scenes of what they're really looking for with senior level responses. Behavioral interviews are really a place for you to brag about yourself. And they really want to know all of your accomplishments and how you did things. Like interviews, basically, they're not a time for you to be humble. They really want to know that you know your stuff and they want to bring on on somebody that wants to do their stuff too, right? Like if you think about it from the employer's perspective, they want somebody competent, they want somebody smart and they want somebody who can get the job done, right? So interviews, you don't wanna shy away from anything. Like you wanna prove your knowledge. You also wanna be personable in a way that like, I, I would enjoy working with this fellow. You, you can't like shy away from your accomplishments and what you did. What kind of killed me was studying became so hard because now I was studying general Android development stuff because sometimes there'd be like an Android coding round as a part of the on-sites. And then I had to know mobile system design. And then some of the interviews I had were more backend focused. So I also had to do backend system design studying. And then the loops usually have like one or two algorithmic coding rounds. So I was still doing leak code stuff. Yeah, it was such a grind, man. At some of these companies, Reddit, I think I had seven rounds of interviews. At TikTok, I had like six rounds of interviews. Meta, I had six. Like it's such a gauntlet. That's like the only way I can really <laughs> describe it. And so lastly, I just want to talk about the last tips that I have for anybody who's looking for a job or if you're thinking about getting a job actually. So if you're thinking about getting a new job or if you've had the feeling that you want a new job, you should start studying now. 
And the reason I say that was because like for me, I was so overwhelmed by all the stuff that I had to study. I had to study the algorithmic interviews, behavioral interviews, system design for both backend and app development. I had to study app domain knowledge. Doing all of those within the same time frame was just such a crazy experience. And it like really tired me out, especially after like a long day of work. I'm like spending two or three hours studying and doing mock interviews with my friends. So for me, like if I was giving advice to myself from a year ago, I would just be like, hey, just like start ramping up on lead code and make sure you can solve all the problems in Kotlin. Make sure you review a lot of the fundamentals of app development. Start slowly ramping up on some of these backend technologies or these different ways of architecting an app. I think these are things that you can just slowly work on. You don't have to do them all in a few weeks or in a month. I think it overall makes the process much better. Unless you think you're going to be at your job for the next 10 years, you should warm up. You should study a little bit. You should ramp up a little bit on your time here and there. You don't have to do a ton of it, but that is like the biggest advice that I could give. Like some of the biggest highlights of what I just went over is cold emailing is one of the best ways to get interviews. The domain of your resume really matters. So if you don't like your current role, try to transition out of it or make sure you only apply to things in that role or else I don't think you're going to get responses. The code 150 is really good for brushing back up on algorithmic coding interviews if you haven't done it in a while. Hello interview is good for system design for backend stuff. For app side stuff, there is like no playbook for app side development. There's like one Git GitHub repo. Behavioral interviews, make sure you really brag about yourself. It's such a grind. It doesn't have to be, but there's a lot of stuff that you have to know. Anyways, yeah, that was just like a big dump of my whatever I learned. And, you know, if I get laid off or something, I will have to go through all of it again. So maybe I'll watch this video like a year from now and be like, I hate my life. Anyways, okay, that is it. All right, bye.